Hello and welcome back to Roguelite Roulette. Hopefully we get a better game than Skelly Celeste, because I don't know where this game is getting its very positive rating from. It is not a fun game. Maybe I just didn't give it enough time, maybe I'm terrible at it, but I was not having fun with it. Anyways, let's uh, spin the wheel. Ah, Darkest Dungeon. Okay. It has been quite some time <clears throat> since I played Darkest Dungeon. But I am in love with this game. Where are you? There you are. I think I have some mods enabled. Uh, so I guess we'll see. I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure I do. and imperial, gazing proudly from its stoic perch above the moor. I lived all my years in that ancient, rumor-shadowed manor, fattened by decadence and luxury. And yet I began to tire of conventional extravagance. Singular unsettling tales suggested the mansion itself was a gateway to some fabulous and unnameable power. With relic and ritual, I bent every effort towards the excavation and recovery of those long-buried secrets, exhausting what remained of our family fortune. Swarthy workmen and sturdy shovels. At last, in the salt-soaked crags beneath the lowest foundations, we unearthed that damnable portal and to deluding and evil. step unsettled the ancient earth but we were in a realm of death and madness in the end i alone fled laughing and wailing through those blackened arcades of antiquity until consciousness failed me you remember our venerable house opulent and imperial it is a festering abomination. I beg you, return home, claim your birthright, and deliver our family from the ravenous, clutching shadows of the darkest dungeon. Oh, that voice actor, <clears throat> he was doing a very good job. Okay, and so here we are, Darkest Dungeon. I'm sad to say that I have never once beaten this game. Uh, and it's not because I don't think I can. <clears throat> I think I can. The problem is, is that, and this is the problem I have with early access games, is that I tend to play the shit out of these games when they enter early access if I choose to play them. And this is one of those games. I bought this game in early access and I played the hell out of it. I don't know how many hours I put into it. Over a hundred. Um, maybe even two hundred. Uh, and so as a result, when it released into full, like to 1.0, <clears throat> I kind of just didn't have the will to keep playing it anymore. Um, just because I felt bored of it, you know. Um, they added a bunch of new stuff into it. Like, this is this is how early I played it. I played the game when you couldn't go to the... Uh, the, the uh, you couldn't go to the Darkest Dungeon, <clears throat> for sure. But you also... <clears throat> Jesus. Couldn't go to the uh, Cove area. So, uh, and it was, it was in that build where you were... If you weren't playing at zero light, you weren't playing it right. It was really easy to play at zero light and, and just like just completely fuck the game in its ass essentially. So, uh, anyways, but without further ado, let's let's. I'm not gonna play my poop campaign. <laughs> I'm gonna play this one. I'll just leave all of my all of the stuff on all the DLC on.
Is this your first estate? The Crimson Court increases the complexity and pressure of the campaign. Uh, okay, well, we'll, we'll take the Crimson Court off. I can leave the Crimson Court on. I'll just do the darkest. I'll play the, the normal campaign. And then... I do have mods, right? Yeah, I do. I'm going to put all these mods on. Should I put these mods? Yeah, let's put them all on. I wish there was an easy activate all. This will likely make us overpowered, but whatever. The game's fun regardless. Okay. You will arrive along the old road. It winds with a troubling serpent-like suggestion through the corrupted countryside. Leading only, I fear, to ever more tenebrous places. There is a sickness in the ancient pitted cobbles of the old road. And on its writhing path, you will face viciousness, violence, and perhaps other damnably transcendent terrors. So steal yourself, and remember there can be no bravery without madness. The old road will take you to hell. But in that gaping abyss, we will find our redemption. While it does sound like the person who wrote that just put the whole script through a thesaurus, it is nevertheless great. And the the, the narrator is just so good. You, you just can't top the narrator of this game. I think a lot of games have come to try to... Um, what's going on with this? Why? Hold on a second. I need to pause real quick. Okay, we're back, and now it's recording properly. I don't know what the fuck was going on with my capture there. Okay, so this is the this is uh, the tutorial of the game. We can look at our map down here. Uh, the goal is just to make it. So our 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 uh, wagon crashed. You start the game with just two two people in your party. You can get up to four people in your party. You'll have four people in every single dungeon that you go into, uh, at least at the start. Who knows if you'll have four by the end of them? Anyways, so we just uh, we're in a we're in a room right now. So <clears throat> when you're in rooms, there's not really much you can do. It, this this display down well, you can't see my mouse, but down in the in the map thing, the thing that's zooming in and out right now, uh, you can see that our party is in that square. That's a room, and the the smaller squares is a hallway. We click the other other room to go to it. And we might run into, and we definitely will run into enemies here on this tutorial. Everyone's it, so things are done on on initiative and speed. You can see everybody's stats down here. So, Dismas, who is a highwayman, who's like a rogue, he has a high speed probably. Yeah, his speed is seven. So, the higher your speed, is it the higher your speed or is it lower? We'll see. I think it's the higher your speed, the faster your initiative is going to get drawn. Everybody has speed. This guy's got three speed. Yeah, so uh, he's obviously slower than... Uh, he might be faster than Reynald, but uh, he's definitely slower than Dismas. So single target, you got you got your abilities down here, your uh, your attacks and, and support abilities. Uh, everything depends on on where you are standing in your group. So Dism or, yeah, Dismas... Because he's standing in, in spot two out of four, he can do his open vein, 
he can do pistol shot, he can do grape shot, he can do all of his shit. <clears throat> but he may not be able to hit everybody, because their, their positions matter too. So, like, I can't shoot, because you can't shoot the first person in the line, so... Obviously, we're going to try to open him up. Bleed, that's a DOT. So he was faster than Reynold. Reynold's speed is one. Yeah, so... Uh, he's at... What is he at? He's at 6 out of 12 health. We'll do... If we do... If we do smite, we'll do between 6 to 12 damage. So he's got 6. Might as well just do that. After every fight, you'll get loot. You take it all. There's not any reason not to. Unless you don't have space, which can happen. Uh, during your exploration, in, when you're in like the hallways, you'll run into interactable objects. Uh, a lot of them are, are positive. A lot of them are negative. Some of them you can change the negative into a positive if you have a certain item, which I'll show you when we get to. You're not gonna get fucked over in the in the tutorial, I don't think. There is much to be found in forgotten places. And this is the last room. As soon as we get through this, we're at our estate, which is back in the background back there. Okay, so here we have a little bit more of um <clears throat> a little bit more of a decision to make here. So this guy takes up two spots, which means I can shoot him. I can also just shoot this guy, the the fusilier, back here. And I think I am going to shoot the Fusilier. The reason why is because the Fusilier can do damage to both... Well, both of them can do damage to both of us, but the Fusilier does a lot of damage. So I'm going to focus the Fusilier. And I lucked out, got a crit, and killed him instantly. Oh, he, and he got a crit in response. It shouldn't matter. I think we can all we can both do our stuff from, from wherever we're standing. So since this is obviously going to take more than one turn because he's got... 35 health. Uh, I'm going to try to stun him. Okay, he resisted it, but it was worth a shot. Okay, we've got a bleed stacking up on him. I'm going to try to stun him again. What's his stun? His stun is 50% effective, or it's 50% uh, resistive, so I got a 1 in 2 chance of stunning him. I'm going to try it again. Okay, and he resisted again. We're going to win this fight. I don't think you can... I think you can lose. It's really hard to lose the first tutorial fight, though. Yeah, we're gonna kill him right here. So, no point in doing that. I'm just gonna hit... Okay, I missed. So, okay, never mind. He's got bleed. Alright. So, we completed the quest. That means we can just leave at any point. Uh, I want to stay because I want to get this. I think it. I think this hurts us, but whatever. Yeah, doesn't matter because we resisted. And if we had a key, we could probably have opened that up, but we didn't have a key. So after every single um, after every single dungeon run, you'll get the victory screen of showing what you collected, uh, the treasure you collected in your heirlooms. We'll talk about heirlooms later. You also get quest re rewards. And then there's a chance you'll get, you know, you'll get XP level up. Uh, you get they, they call leveling up resolve. So he's at one one resolve. Um, and then this will uh, limit what you can and can't do. So it's best it, the, the way the game gets around you just using one group uh, is that if you use only one group, they get too powerful and they won't go on easier quests. So it's good to have a big group of people, spread them out use some of them for smaller dungeons and others for bigger ones. Anyways, uh, another thing that can happen is um, uh, there's a chance for everybody to have a trait at the end of every uh, adventure. So Dismas got a trait. Unyielding, that's a good one. So you don't die. Your characters don't die when they hit zero health. They can die once they get zero health. So once you hit zero health, every single attack against that character from then on while they sit at zero health I think is like a 50-50% chance that you die is it 50% is it or is it 35 it might be it might be different on different difficulties but anyways he has a 10% greater chance not to die as a result now good trait 
such as it is. This squalid hamlet, these corrupted lambs, they are yours now, and you are bound to them. Okay. The Hungry Tyrant. I'm starving, yes. I'm here to help you out. Let me accompany your slaughter in these foul lands. Okay, so he's a, a group member. I think this is a mod. I, I think. I, I don't know. Uh, this will show you what's happened during the week. I don't really ever look at this stuff. Quest goals. Again, there's a lot of shit to do in this game. Uh, who is this guy? He is a hexer. I think this is a modded character. A modded class. I don't know, though, for sure. Hodenek. Hodenk. Uh, he looks pretty cool. Only one outfit. He's got good in melee. Uh, oh, good if the... Okay, so so you will, you will actually get characters that are good or bad in light or good or bad in dark. So this guy is good in, in light. So we're always going to want to keep our torch lit. I always do. I pretty much don't play in the darkness anymore. It's it's much more dangerous than it used to be when I used to play the game. So this guy will be a good addition to the team. But he's also got claustrophobia and germophobia. So best probably not to put him into the sewers because there's lots of blighted enemies down there. I don't really know what claust. I think claustrophobia probably has to do with running into interactable objects when you're in the dungeons. Anyways, what does he do? He's got a... Okay, so he, he makes himself less powerful, but he also takes stress away. But then he also gets better accuracy. Huh. That's weird. Interesting. Okay, uh, and then it's a fr oh, it's a free action. That's cool. And then he's got putrefied flesh. It hits everybody in the enemy team. It does no damage, but it also takes. Okay, it's a huge debuff. It gives him plus. It gives him better crit chance. It, it debuffs the enemies a lot. So this guy's a support class. And he's got eroded mind, does no damage. It probably does like one damage. You probably do one damage. Takes away their all their resistances and their movers. Oh wow, cool. Oh, and it also increases the bleed damage. Okay. And then he's got Wow. So this guy's just a huge a huge uh, support class. Maybe these these are probably damaging. Let's see. Melt. It looks that does do damage because there's no damage modifier. This does damage, uh, and this does damage. Bro, no, it doesn't. Okay, I don't know how much I'll use this guy in this video. But that's a cool character. Okay, so first things first. Here's your estate. Everything is shit to start off. You will spend the entirety of the game uh, building your hamlet back up to its former luster. And then take on the darkest dungeon in the end. Which I've never done. But first things first, let's go to the graveyard. Most will end up here. Covered in the poisoned earth. Awaiting merciful oblivion. So this is where everybody that dies during your during your adventure will end up as you know just just to show people what you did. Uh, then we've got this is. Time, you will know the tragic extent <clears throat> of my failings. We could watch the first two cutscenes here if you wanted. Uh, it's also got other stuff here for as you get through the storyline. Trinkets and charms gathered from all the forgotten corners of the earth. So, this lady sells trinkets. You will get trinkets as you play the game. You don't necessarily have to buy them here. You're going to get them from just doing quests, going in and, and adventuring. Uh, but they're, they she usually has some rare ones, and um, they're pretty expensive, obviously, as you can see. Then we've got the stagecoach. This is where you recruit people. Women and men, so 
soldiers and outlaws, fools and corpses. All will find their way to us now that the road is clear. A sister of battle, pious and unrelenting. Okay, so... <clears throat> um, when your game's not modded, which mine is, even when it is modded, you're always going to get a Plague Doctor and a Vestal as your second two characters. You'll always have Reynold and you'll always have Dismas. These two will have different names every time, but they'll always be a Plague Doctor and a Vestal. And the Plague Doctor, they're both support classes. They both can do damage, but they also have much more support roles. <clears throat> I, they'll probably able also have the same the same abilities as well. Let's see. Yeah, I think these are always the same. They always give you the two heals with the Vestal and at least two of her damaging abilities. And you'll always get his debuffs and buff as well as his damaging. I think it's always the same. It's always the same for Reynold and Desmos as well. So, um, uh, another thing that we can learn about here is that everything can be upgraded. So the stagecoach can be upgraded. And the way you upgrade things is with your... Uh, heirlooms that you get while you're going through the dungeons and your heirlooms are down here uh, I always recommend that you upgrade your your stagecoach um, your stagecoach at the beginning of the game so that you can hold more so like right now we can only hold 13 characters it might not be necessary to do this this up to 16 right this second but what is important is to make sure that we have other choices so now we're going to have three people next week when we come back from our uh first adventure into the dungeons so instead of just having two choices we'll have three i think that's always a good idea to do right away None of these other things really make sense to upgrade right now. Maybe the blacksmith and the guild make sense. But we'll talk about the tavern, the sanitarium, and the abbey after our first dungeon. I'll talk about the guild and blacksmith. For, oh, we can't even go in there. Okay. So, yeah, never mind. So, we'll talk about these things after our first dungeon. I'm probably only going to do one dungeon in this video because dungeons take quite a while. So, uh, we'll, we'll embark on our next dungeon. Okay, so I'm going to put him at third and her at four. I'm not going to use this guy right off the bat. This is what your party would be like at, at every single other game. So I'm not going to use Hodu, whatever it is, Hodin. So your first dungeon is always going to be in the ruins. The ruins is, in my opinion, the easiest place to go. It's the first place you ever go. It's the easiest place to go. Warrens is like um, the... Um, the uh, what can I think? The Warrens is the sewer system. It's, in my opinion, the worst place ever. The Weald is like a forest that surrounds your, the the uh, your home state, your homestead, and the Cove is obviously has to do with water. Uh, the courtyard and the farmstead are DLC things, which we're not going to get to in this video. But anyways, so we've got our we've got our people. The reason I've picked them this way is because. This guy can use all of his shit from this position. He'll be able to attack, he'll be able to buff, he'll be able to debuff from this position. All I really care about the Vestal doing, because she doesn't really do much damage, is healing. So she can use both of her heals back here, which is all I need her to be doing. She's going to be in charge of healing our group as we go through it. So now we go to... Okay, so uh, we've picked the, the quest. These will be our rewards. We'll get 3,000 four crests and this debuff stone uh, one thing to note is that I, I think unless the uh, trinkets are like super rare pretty much every trinket has a negative to it so you're gonna get better debuff skills using this but you're also gonna be slower that would be good on on someone like the witch doctor who does lots of debuffs it would be even good it would also be good on Hodin who also does a lot of debuffs it would just make them slower they take their turn uh, further back in the, in the in the order this is what you'll get just from completing it that does not count what you'll find while you're in there the cost of preparedness measured now in gold later in blood okay so 
because we've brought in a uh, Vestal and a uh, Plague Doctor, we get two items right off the bat. Antivenom and Holy Water. We're going to keep both of them because they have potential uses. Holy Water can actually uh, uh, increase your resistances. And then Antivenom can cure poison and toxins and stuff like that. It also can interact with interactables in the environment to make them less dangerous. Talk about that if that happens. So the things that are absolutely necessary, this is a short dungeon, means there's going to... We're just going to have to visit... What, what is the uh, goal? I'll see, we'll see the goal when we get in there. I didn't look at it. So um, it's not a very long dungeon. If it's explore 95% of the rooms, you're going to explore all of them except one or 90% of the rooms or whatever. There's probably only going to be five rooms in a small dungeon. Uh, or it's going to be beat every room fight that you run into in which case there won't be that many either uh, but while you're going through dungeons you need to make sure that you have enough provisions to make it through it and what and by that I mean food everybody eats one food uh, and it's random it's a random chance when people get hungry but everyone will get hungry at the same time so to feed them all we all obviously need four right but I'm banking on there being more than one hunger roll while we're in there. So I'd bring it, I'm going to bring 12 just to be safe. 12 food that lets me heal somebody or a couple people because if you eat, you heal. Um, you can eat without being hungry, and uh, is what I mean. So that gives us two at least two uh, safe hunger rolls and possibly three if I don't have to heal anybody. Better be, I like to be better safe than sorry. I'm going to bring two shovels, and if we need them, I'll, sh I'll tell you. Uh, we already got antivenom and that. I'm going to bring one of everything else, though. Uh, and, and if we need them, you'll see. And I'm going to bring six torches. This is probably way too much shit, but we're going to take it all. I'll explain torches once we load in. Actually, I can explain it now since it's loading. So, torches... As you go through the dungeon, the light gets dimmer. Your torch goes out. The dar the dimmer it is, the more dangerous the encounters are. But the higher reward. You have to have a balancing act. I like to play safe. I play with 100 darkness or 100 light or close to that at any point in time. At any given point in time. Um, but there is a benefit to going dark. Because if you go dark, you find more stuff. But it's far more dangerous. At higher light, it's far more safe. Because you have the ability to startle enemies. We'll, we'll talk about that if it happens. Anyways, we're back into it. So we start off at, what is this, 100? Yeah, we're at 100. You could you could just snuff the light out immediately, which is what I used to do. Uh, but anyways, let's, uh, let's go. So we need to explore 90% of the rooms. So every room except one, essentially. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up. And then... What do I want to do? Do I want to do that? I'm going to go up, and then to the right, and then down. And then, depending on how uh, how well nourished we are, I might go back to the room we missed. But from that's what our, our goal is going to be right up, right away. I like the order of everybody. I I didn't go into these guys' uh, traits, so let's talk about these. Natural eye. So, ranged skills. Luckily, he's pretty much all ranged. So, he's going to have more likelihood of hitting on both of these things, which are great. But he is a stress eater, so he eats 100% more food if his stress is above 50. Hopefully we won't get there. He's obsessed with material things, so he might interact with objects without me wanting him to. She's robust, so she has better disease resistance. Okay, me meditating, we'll talk about that. Well, probably won't. Camping is something we won't talk about today. Uh, inspiring tune. Okay, so he's tone deaf. Okay, so not terrible. Got got pretty good people here. So let's go. We'll see what happens. As we're going, you'll see we're down to eighty-eight light, and we found another torch. So before we go into this room, just so we're at a high light, I'm gonna flame a blazing star is born 
any time that you walk into a room and you see an object that can be react, uh, interacted with, you're going to have a, f a fight. Okay, so these guys are skeletons. Skeletons have a higher uh, bleed resistance, but they have next to no blight resistance. So I am going to attempt to get one of these guys poisoned right off the bat. So he's going to take five damage. He's at what? At what health is this guy at? So he's going to be... He's going to die if we do, like, any damage to him as soon as he takes his turn. Um, what's his speed? One. Odds are he's going to go before Renald. Alright, we're just going to kill him. Well, we can't really do anything here, honestly. We're going to... Just kill the party. The blood pumps. The limbs obey. I'm gonna stun this guy. Good. He cannot take his. He cannot take his turn this turn. So good. Another thing to note: when you kill things and you kill them without a crit or without them dying to a blight or bleed, their corpse stays behind in that space. So as a result, if you rely on positioning. This, this corpse being here is going to obviously get in the way of having to deal with people way in the back if you have no ranged characters. So, just something to keep in mind. This guy's definitely going to be dead whenever he takes his turn. So, let's see if we can get another crit. Crits actually de-stress your crew. He's dead, right? Five? Yeah, he's dead. So what does this do? We're just going to kill him. Fuck it. Okay, so here we go. We got, we've got a... Uh, let's get these guys back into order, obviously. Um, I'm just going to go into it. I don't... Th yeah, un unlocked. We don't have to use a key. It's probably not going to be bad. Yeah. Nice. Okay. And we will continue onwards. All right, here's what I mean by bringing in shovels. Luckily, we brought three. Well, we brought two, but we found another one. You can always find shovels. You can always find torches. But it's always better to be safer than sorry. So if we didn't have a shovel, we would just have to clear the obstacle by hand. It would take a long time. Our torch light would go way down. We'd probably be at this like third tick right here. And it would increase the chances that we have to, like, eat, because it would take so long. But since we have a shovel, we can just click the shovel, and it clears it instantly. The plus side of having a shovel. Okay, we've got a hallway fight here. This can happen. I'm going to want to focus this bitch back here if I can, uh, just because she induces stress. And one thing that you'll come to, to realize as you play this game, if you somehow have not played this game, is that stress is actually way worse than health. If you build up stress, the only way to get rid of that is back at town, and we'll talk about that after this is over. But you can heal, and you'll be healed once you get back to town. You, you, it's very hard to get rid of stress. So, uh, I am going to try to blight this cunt back here. All right, good. She's blighted. She's already taken her turn. She's going to take four damage. Okay, good. Uh, I'm going to shoot her. So she's... I think she's dead next turn, right? Yeah, she's dead next turn, so I don't even have to t uh, worry about her anymore. All right. I'm going to... So this guy has a uh, zealous accusation. It hits the first two in the, in the line. I think I'm just going to do that. We have very little to worry about in this first dungeon. We're probably not going to be very hurt by the end of it. Ah, oh, nice. Two dodges. Yeah, so she's dead. Good. I'm going to blight this guy just in case. Let's see, at seven, he's going to take five. Oof, yikes. We'll just do another Zealous Accusation. Alright, this guy's dead now. Yep. 
So, pretty easy fight there. Remind yourself that overconfidence Again. And insidious killer. I'll let this guy finish talking. I like to have the torch up high when I enter rooms just so that we have a good chance of surprise. Okay, so like, here's here's one. You saw this happen in the first fight we had. Uh, Dismas and Reynold got surprised. When that happens, it will automatically deorder your party. Um... And if you, you know, if you're relying on their positioning a lot, that can really screw up the fight. You, alternatively, can also surprise the enemies when you walk into a room. There's a higher chance of doing that when your light is high. So, if the light is high, you could surprise them. That means you guys get to take... Everyone on your team gets to take a turn first without them doing anything. And then they all get their turn afterwards. So, it's good to, it's good to surprise people. Yeah, so... Wealth beyond measure. Wow, okay, cool. So, uh, remember, he's he's got hylomania. He's obsessed with material things. So that, that trait made him... I did not click that. It made him do that on his own. Light it up a bit. Okay, I got another fight here. We got surprised again, and this is terrible. This guy's positioning's not bad. That not that bad. So I'm gonna try to kill this bitch real quick. Uh Well, shit. This order is bad. If I can get Reynold back up to the front, we should be okay. You gotta go one at a time, too. This is a bad fight. This is a really unlucky fight. Alright, that's good. Push her. No, don't resist it. Alright, she's dead. We don't have to worry about her anymore. Okay, he resisted the bleed. Good, good, good. Yeah, I know. Alright, so... Let's get him poisoned. He should be dead, right? Yeah, he's dead next turn. Again, we'll get keep getting back into position here. Luckily, they're dumb and they're spreading their damage out, which they shouldn't be. They should be focusing my Plague Doctor since he's really hurt pretty bad. Alright, we're good. We should be fine. Yep. That was a really bad fight. And it's all because we got surprised, even though we were only on Dim Light. That's the second worst, you know? It's not that bad. Uh, you need to go back. That was our original order. Good. All right, this is a locked strong box. Or, or is that heirloom chest? Do I need to use this? Yeah. So because it wasn't unlocked, it has a chance to be trapped. You could take damage or get ble bled or blighted, or have a bad uh, like a disease happen. But if you have a key, you just get to open it up. This is the DLC thing. I'm not going to do anything with blood right this second. Okay, you just saw scouting. So, entering a room, has a, you have a chance to scout. And when you scout, you get, to, you get a preview of what's coming up. So, in this corridor, we're going to run into a trap, but this is going to be an empty room. Uh, I want to explain this, this interaction with this treasure chest as well. So, the treasure chest... Um, it didn't say it was locked, but it also didn't say it was unlocked. So, because that happens, and because I've played this game a lot, these things can be trapped sometimes. You, if you, if it's trapped, you might not get anything out of it, and you'll just get 
either bled or blighted or hurt or you'll get a negative trait so it's better to just avoid those when you can and since it was locked if you have a key you can just put the key in it and you avoid that altogether you just get everything that's good out of it without anything bad happening so let's continue on when I get up to this uh, when I get up to this thing you'll I'll explain it so this is a trap if I was just to walk over it one of our guys would get has a chance to get hurt but we can also since we can see it we can try to disarm it so who's got the best trap 50 20 20 10 so this moss has the best chance it's only a one out of two chance so okay he disarmed it okay we're about to run out of light here we'll do two I forgot it was an empty room. I shouldn't have done that. Alright, this time he didn't go for it. We have lots of food left over. I'm going to eat some. Just to heal up our guys for the next fight. See, this is... Okay, here's a hunger roll. It's a chance. I don't know if it's on a timer or if it's like a percentage chance that goes up as the adventure goes along. But every tick of in-game time, there's a chance that you have a hunger roll. And if you don't have enough food, you obviously... You take uh, 20... You take a lot of damage and you take stress damage as well. But if you have food, then everyone heals a little bit. another empty room okay so we've got definitely got a fight in the next one we're gonna go do it obviously I have a curio in this place too oh and it's an obstacle and good we have obviously we have a shovel another stress main like a stress guy this is getting dangerous we definitely need to take out the stress guy first if we can. That's a good start. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. Good. Give them no quarter. Um, this guy's got a. Oh, he doesn't have that big of a stun resist. I'm gonna try to stun this guy in front. Good. single heal on this guy, just get him back up good health. Uh, and then I'm going to, what's he at? Four? If I can damn, if I can uh, if I can get this guy blighted a second time, that'd be really good. So he's going to take eight. He's dead next turn. I don't even think I'm going to, I don't even think I'm going to attack him. We're gonna, instead going to focus on these guys up here. He's dead next turn. Get this guy blighted up. Oh, he resisted it. Wow. Impressive. Just do some damage to all of them. Slowly, gently. This is how a life is taken. Good heal. Okay, good. This guy's pretty much screwed at this point.
I'm not going to return yet because I want to get into this uh, into this treasure chest, and we have a key, right? Yeah. Finding the stuff is only the first test. And we're all in pretty good shape. We still have the one problem we're going to run into is that we only we don't have any more torches, but we're still in good shape. We've got at least we've got enough for two more hunger rolls. I'm going to see if I can get back to this other room and just see if there's anything. There's a chance we could run into extra enemies going back on our... doubling back on ourselves here. But it might be worth just seeing what's in that last room. Oh, he, remember, he eats double because he's over 50% health. Or 50% stress. 50 stress, not 50%. Okay. If we run into a fight here, I might I might just leave if if uh okay, there's a trap. Six damage is not that bad. Torch is pretty bad, but let's just do it. Okay, we've got a fight. I'm gonna try to take out the ranged guy right away. It's a really good start. Uh, let's do that to him. He's not going to be dead, but he's dead next turn. Not bad. Uh, we're going to zealous accusation these guys. Yikes. Don't like that. Gonna, oh, whoops, I meant to do the single target heal. <laughs> whoops. He sh he'll be fine. Well, we should win this fight. This guy's dead. Alright, he's dead. Can I get him blighted? Alright, as long as I attack first, he's done. Okay, he got to attack first. Who's he attacking? Okay, I just healed you. You're fine. And you're done. Alright, I'm glad I did that. So we got Holy Fountain. Uh, we could put Holy Water in it, if I'm not mistaken, but... You might not need it. I think there's a chance to get rid of an... Uh, like a a negative trait if you do this. So I'm going to have you do it. Okay, never mind. We just got some good loot. And that's the end of the quest. We made it through the whole dungeon. We got, what is this, 3,000 plus 10? Or, so we got like about 10,900 10, 10, out of that, I think. Everyone got a trait. Uh, the two new guys leveled up. That's a good trait. Okay, we got a negative one, but a positive one as well. 20%. Okay, that's really good. Okay, so as long as we don't put him up against Eldritch Monsters, he should be fine. Another good one. And just a bad one. The yips. Accuracy down, but as long as she's just healing, that shouldn't matter. Tents are pitched, banners fly, and the corpse wagons stand at the ready. The circus has come to town. Okay, um, I think that that gives that should give everybody a a brief overview of what this game's all about. You build up your party, you pick a party, put them in positions based on what abilities they have, and send them into a dungeon and hope they find some some good shit in there. Uh, you're gonna lose people in it. It's a pretty tough game, even on the normal difficulty. You, don't be discouraged if you lose people, because it's just going to happen. Um, especially on your first run, uh, or on your first try. Uh, the things that we didn't go over on, on this one are camping, upgrading these other buildings, but I think if, you know, if you haven't played this game somehow and you're watching this video... You can figure that stuff out on your own. Anyways, I this is one of my favorite games, 
one of my favorite roguelite games of all time. It doesn't seem like a roguelite, but it, I, I consider it to be a roguelite. Um, yeah, I mean, if you haven't played this game, what are you waiting for? Anyways, I want to thank everybody for watching, and I'll see you next time.